Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I am AJ Hoag, author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You can try for a dollar, so try it. Enjoy. Our topic today, we're talking more about speaking English to everyone, speaking English to people around the world. And specifically, I'm going to help you more <laughs> find conversation partners. Find conversation partners. People you can talk to online for free. For free. I think it's important to do it for free because um, with our challenge coming up, we have a conversation challenge starting April 20th. Right? Three months. Three months of conversation challenge. Your goal. Our goal. Speak English as much as possible to real people, right? So conversations, you want to be having conversations, hopefully four times a week, five times a week, maybe every single day. That would be expensive if you paid for it. So I think it's better to have uh, free conversation partners. And the best ones, the best conversation partners for you are Effortless English members, other Effortless English members, because they will be doing the challenge also. They also will want to speak a lot, so perfect. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lots of people saying hello, hi. People saying hello from many different countries, Taiwan, the Philippines, Brazil, uh, let's see, Mexico, it looks like, uh, I can, if I'm seeing the flag correctly. <laughs> um, so anyway, hello everybody and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody who's joining me live. I am live on YouTube right now. So today, so today I did a few things. Today I had a VIP meeting, a Zoom meeting with our VIP members, which was great. It was, uh, we had a really nice chats. Everybody got the talk that wanted to talk which was great. So everybody who wanted to talk today to me on Zoom could do it, VIP members. It was really great. So I'm, I'm really happy when I can get to everybody. Sometimes it's not possible, but today we could do it. So it was great. It was a two-hour chat <laughs> with uh, me and VIP members using Zoom. So it was the video. I got to see Vladislav, who's one of our regulars on here on YouTube. If you watch live, you know Vladislav. And uh, actually, you know, I've, t I've talked to him before, but this, I think this is the first time I've seen him face to face, like on on a video call, which was really cool. And uh, anyway, I talked to lots of people. It was really great. VIP members, I encourage them to join our challenge and to find conversation partners. And they gave me good feedback. They said, AJ, sometimes it's hard to find conversation partners. It's hard because uh, I will try. For example, I will go to the Gab group or I go so or I go on Gab, or I go somewhere else, Facebook or somewhere. But it's it's hard. I, I, post, I put a message and nobody answers. And how do I find like good conversation partners? So I'm going to help you do that today. We're going to talk about that. That's our, our, our topic today. <coughs> First, let me mention something. I mentioned it to my VIP members today. I'm going to mention to you that it's, it's very good to talk to people who are not native speakers. It's also good to talk to native speakers. They're both good. Okay, so I'm learning Japanese. As you know, I'm doing Japanese. This challenge, I'm doing Japanese. I'm starting the challenge early. I already started my challenge because <laughs> I'm doing it with uh, Benny Lewis and um, Fluent in Three Months. So I'm, gonna, I'm doing a four-month challenge. You're doing a three-month challenge. Your challenge starts next month. Mine is already going. And uh, part of my challenge, I'm using italki. So I'm talking to Japanese people, which is great. I've talked to many Japanese people already. Um, and so please don't spam the comments. Just put your comment one time, if you can, please. Um, 
So I've been talking, you know, native speakers, Japanese people, and uh, that's been great. Uh, it's really been a good experience so far. But then today, I also had a one hour chat with other people who are learning Japanese. So, not native speakers, not Japanese.、Um, uh, there are a couple Australians,、uh, I think the other girl, I'm not sure where she was from, America, I think. And then me, so two Americans, two Australians, I believe. And、uh, it was really, really, really good. Okay, there were some things about it that were even better than talking to a native speaker. So, why, why do I say that? That sounds strange. But why it was better is that because they were also learning Japanese, they are also learning Japanese.、Um, They also they understood they, they, everybody. They used simple Japanese. They used more simple words.、Uh, it, it was、uh, quite easy to understand them. And they were very patient, right, with me. With the native speakers, the Japanese,、uh, it can sometimes be a little tough, right? Because sometimes it's, sometimes it's difficult for a native speaker, right? They, they're born as a baby learning a language. It's hard for them to make it very easy, right? It, in their mind, they think they're doing very slow, very easy, but it's still difficult, <laughs> right? So, so if, if you talk to other learners, it can, this can be an advantage、um, where you can、uh, have the opportunity to talk to another person. They understand, you know, they're also learning. So、uh, you can both go a little more slowly, and that's, that's, so it's, that's quite good. So it's, Very good to talk to other people from other countries who are also learning English. It's a great experience. If their level's higher than you, if their level's lower than you, it's both, it's fine. So I think I encourage you to do this. So, how are we going to do this? Share my screen. I'm going to show you again and I'm going to give you some advice. I'm going to give you some advice how to find conversation partners and make a good, either a partner, just one person. Or you can make a small conversation group. All right, so here we go. This is my screen. You see my screen. There you go. All right, let's take a look. All right, this is my Gab. This is our Effortless English group on Gab. Okay, and then I have a couple announcements that I put here. And these are going to be helpful to you, I hope. This is, I'm going to read it. It says, if you create a conversation group, I recommend you have rules that everyone must follow. So I was kind of responding to someone、uh, asked me a question about this on Gab also. So here's what I suggest, okay? And, and this is what I told my VIP members today. If you want a conversation partner, do not, do not just put your name, do not just say, hi, everybody, I want a conversation partner. Please leave your information. Why? Because people are a little shy and、uh, some people are a little nervous about contacting someone new online. Like they, 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 they don't know them, they've never seen them before, and、uh, it makes people nervous to do that.、Uh, so, the first thing I recommend is you need to put some information about yourself. Put information about yourself. You could put your picture. Like, here's a guy right here. He put his picture here, which is quite nice. He says,、uh, his name is Mert Dermas. Hi, everyone. I'm looking for an English conversation partner、uh, to talk to for AJ's challenge. Let's do this and practice together. Okay. And then he talks about himself a little bit, which is also great. He says, My job is、uh, I work at Remax. You might not know what that is. It's real estate. He's selling,、uh, I don't know what he sells exactly, maybe houses or something.、Um, so that's very nice. And he put a nice, very nice picture of himself, which I think is great. So you want to include personal information. Why? Why do you want to put information about yourself? I mean, nothing private, right? But just you want to talk about, you could talk about your job or your hobbies, what you're interested in. Why? Because that, for people looking for a conversation partner, they, they're looking for someone who they can talk to easily. So if someone has the same hobbies as you or same interests, then they might respond, right? They're more likely to 
respond, right? If you put no information, you just say, hi, I want a conversation partner, please reply. You know, sometimes you, you, no one will reply because uh, they feel nervous, they don't know anything about you, and they don't do it. So instead, you know, put your name, and then, so if it was me, I, hi, I'm AJ, I'm AJ Hogue, I'm American, I live in Japan. My hobbies are jujitsu. I love jujitsu. I do it three times a week. I really love jujitsu and martial arts and mixed martial arts. And uh, I also love hiking and camping and traveling, but especially like going into the mountains and going for long hikes and long walks. And I have, um, you know, I have two children and. I'm learning Japanese, I love Japanese culture, right? So this is a lot more information. And then you might put my picture there, right? So now someone's someone else, another person, they're looking for a conversation partner, and they say, oh, they see my name, and they say, oh, he's into martial arts. Me too. Oh, I like martial arts. It doesn't have to be jujitsu. Maybe they someone else does boxing or something. Oh, that's cool, though. They... They're, they also do some kind of martial arts or sports like that, some kind of fighting sports. So they might say, oh, hey, then they say, hey, AJ, hi, my name is whatever, um, Nikolai. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm from Russia and I do, uh, I do judo or I do sambo. Very cool, you know, let's chat. And then I, then right now I go, we have a connection. We could then I would just reply back, oh, great, you know, so let's let's talk on Skype, right? You suggest an app, you know, some app that you want to use. Just use a free app. And then we just figure out a time, and then we could chat. And the first time, I say just do a short one the first time, maybe just do 30 minutes or even 20 minutes. And, uh, and, and you just talk about something you're both interested in. You could, you know, if your hobby's cooking and the other person likes cooking, it, it can be anything. Right, but if you the more you put, if you put more and more and more information, then there's more uh, things that other people can find, something they also like. Then they say, "Oh, great! I want to talk." He, this person likes cooking. I like cooking. This person likes loves uh, Japanese movies. I like Japanese movies. Right, so. Try to add lots and lots and lots and lots of information when you are looking for a conversation partner here on our Gab group or anywhere else. More information means uh, more people will be interested to contact you. So that's for if you're looking for just one person, one conversation partner. That's The other thing you can do is you can try to create a group. Right, like Carol, I have mentioned Carol many times, and they are, they call themselves Eperos English Friends, their group. And I think she said they had 10 people at the moment. You could do smaller if you want to. I don't suggest doing bigger. Bigger, so here's my here are my recommendations if you want a conversation group, which is also fine. Keep it small, right? T 10 would be maximum for me, <laughs> okay? I think the even better would be something like Th two to five, three to five. If it's a group, it's going to be more than two people. So three to five people for a group. Uh, that's enough. That's enough. Okay, so smaller is better. Uh, some people have tried making really big groups, 20, 30, 40, 50 people. Usually they fail. It just become um, it, it's too many people. Most people don't join. Most people don't talk. It just, it's, it's too much. So if you're making a group, keep the group small, right? And again, if you're putting information on Gab, you're saying, I'm starting a group. You need to be the leader, okay? If you are posting on Gab, then you should be the organizer. You should be the leader of the group. Each group needs a leader. And this is my first recommendation. One leader. Not two, not three, not everybody kind of votes. Nope. No democracy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A king or a queen, <laughs> all right? That's it. It's your group. So you make the rules. You decide who can, who comes in and who's not in. That's it, okay? If you want to make a conversation group, it, that's a great idea. But you need to be the leader. You organize it. You decide when the meeting is. You decide which app is going to be used. You decide who can come in. And you decide the rules of the group. 
and you decide the size. Okay? Because people are waiting. Most people are just waiting and they're like, oh, I'm wait waiting for someone else to invite them. Well, everybody's waiting, so nothing happens. Someone needs to just say, I'm doing it. I'm making a group. We will have five people. <laughs> we will meet once a week. We will talk about a book or we'll talk about a movie each week or whatever. You decide. If you're interested, put your information here. Okay? And you can also talk about the rules. I think every group should have rules. Every group should have rules. Okay? It needs to be organized. You know, with one person, you don't need rules or anything. It's just you talking to one person. It can be very relaxed. Totally fine. But when you make groups, as you get more and more people, you need structure. It needs to be organized. You need a leader. You need rules. You need a schedule. You need topics. Okay? Very important. So, make your group. Make the rules. The rules can be simple, but here's some suggestions. Number one, no spamming. What does that mean? It means you, for your groups, tell, say, you cannot talk about your business. You cannot try to sell things to other people, right? Because sometimes people will come in and then they try to sell like, you know, oh, hey, I've got this book. Everybody buy it, right? Or I've got something else. Like, no, don't do that. <laughs> they say this book is for, I mean, this group is for, this group is for English conversation. So nothing else. Just like on Gab, I'm the leader and I make the rules. So... People can put information about learning English because that's the purpose. But when people put other topics, I will often um, delete the post because I don't want people trying to sell stuff on the Gab group. Uh, I don't want people uh, putting lots of all different political stuff on there. I don't want all these other things that are, are not connected to English. So... I recommend you have the same kind of rules. I recommend you avoid politics because we have an international group. So if you get, you know, someone from North Korea and someone from South Korea, and then they start arguing and fighting about North and South Korea, it will destroy your whole group, right? Everyone else is just, oh no, you know, <laughs> what's, what's happening, <laughs> okay? They can, if people can argue about politics somewhere else, but not just, I think in your group, avoid it. And that's also true for religion and other things. You can talk about spirituality and religion and things like that in a, in a general way. It's totally fine. But but I would say make a rule about trying to, you know, say my religion's the best. Join my religion. Yours sucks. You know, yours is bad. Nah, you don't want that because, again, it will just turn into a huge fight and destroy your group. So no, obviously nothing, no sex, no sexual stuff. I would say no dating. This is another important one. No dating. This is not a dating group. So I would have a rule about that where, uh, you know, don't come into the group. And if you're a guy, try to get a date with a girl or tell her how pretty she is and all that stuff. Eh, 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 because then the group will be destroyed again. The women will run away. <laughs> a lot of the men, too, won't want to be listening to all that. So, again... It's nothing wrong with dating, but there are dating websites on the internet. If you want to date someone, you know, tell people, go there. But I would, I recommend in your conversation groups, none of that. Don't allow that. And then I recommend in, always, always, always have the Effortless English Code, which covers most of this in a general way. We do the best we can. We do the right thing. We show each other we care. I think that should always be the first rule. It's very general. And then you can have some more of these specific groups. I mean, uh, rules, specific rules. Finally, another rule. This is a rule that Carol has for her group. And I think it's a very good rule that I recommend you have it. She has a rule that everybody must participate. Everybody must be active. If, 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 people are not, if someone's not active in her group, then they get kicked out of the group. You know, she's a very nice person. She's sweet. I'm sure she does it in a very polite, nice way. But still, you know, everyone's there to talk and to practice English and participate. So if you have somebody, they join the group, but they don't say anything. And they don't go to the, they don't come to the meetings. They don't join the meetings. They never join the meetings. And they never talk. What's the point? They're not helping. They're not doing anything. They're not helping everyone else. Because you need people to talk, right? If, only, if one person talks and everyone else is silent, it's not a conversation. 
So I understand people are nervous and it's difficult sometimes, but you've got to participate. So I think it's a good rule that you say, okay, in our group, in our conversation group, you must participate. Yes, people will miss a meeting sometimes. That's okay. But but I would have a rule like you can miss one meeting per month, <laughs> right? And uh, you must talk, you know, whatever. Uh, you must you must talk at every meeting and uh, and join the discussion. And if people don't do that, then just drop them from the group politely, saying, you know, I'm sorry. Seems you here's how you do it politely. You could just send a message and say, I'm sorry. It seems you are, you know, busy or maybe, you know, not ready yet to join and to participate. So, uh, I'm sorry, but I must drop you from the group. Good luck to you, and you know, you know, please continue with your English. See you. Next, see you. Bye bye. You know, something like that. So you'd be very sweet and nice about it, but uh, I, I think you should do that. Drop people, because otherwise you'll get a bit a group, and you have like two people, or one person is doing everything, and nobody else is doing anything, and then the group dies again. So follow these rules, okay? If so, again to repeat, if you're looking for one person or just for conversation partners, put a lot of information about yourself. It's almost like looking for a job. <laughs> like a job posting a job resume almost but instead of a job resume it's a uh, it's just your hobbies and your interests and what you want to talk about and uh, you know who you are and you want the more you put and the more details you have more people will be attracted more people will be interested and you have a good chance to find conversation partners that's for individuals for groups you want to you can also talk about yourself, same thing, but also you need to have some very uh, specific rules about you know, the effortless English code. Everyone must participate, and then you know, no spam, sexual stuff, um, politics, religious arguments, that kind of thing. All right, so this is what I recommend. It's very important. The, why, the reason I'm talking about this a lot is because you need conversation partners for this challenge. You need conversation partners. If you don't have anyone to talk to, you then you can't have a conversation. <laughs> okay? And um, yeah, I, I, Vlad, I know that North Korea doesn't have an open web. I'm just kind of joking about that uh, example. But you, you understand what I'm talking about. You... you you know, with the political arguments, you could have that argument inside the United States. You could have two Americans and someone from the North and someone from the South, and they could just, you know, argue about everything. So, <laughs> believe me, you want to avoid it. <laughs> All right. So, there you go. Let's. I'll just get into your questions and comments now. We have a few more. You, you have a few more weeks to find conversation partners. Here's Slavisa, who's in that group I just mentioned. She's in Carol's group. And, you know, I know she can tell you that that it's a wonderful, wonderful group. I've talked to them several times. I've joined their meetings. They're really fantastic. Uh, she's done. Um, I, I, I don't think she can right now, but at some time I want in the future, I want to interview Carol and have her talk about how did she or how does she organize this group? And, you know, how did she help to make it so great you know what is she as the as the organizer what what does she recommend for other people to help them make a good group yeah like sarah says aj we've made friends around the world because of you some of us become have become real friends we wish someday we can see each other face to face yeah that's so great sarah that's so great and we've done it before it's been several years now but I have done um, events in, uh, we've well, we've always done them in Spain, <laughs> um, where we do, we've done like a VIP member meeting, and uh, people, we did them in Barcelona, we did a few of them in Barcelona, and everyone came, and they me met each other, people came from many different countries, I, I went, and uh, got to meet each other face to face, and people really made good friends, and also people, um, you know, by doing like this, like uh, uh, having, 
you know, conversation groups or partners. Uh, people do, they travel and then they meet each other. Like they'll visit their, their conversation partners, uh, country or they'll, uh, they'll both go, you know, they'll go to some other country together. And it's really nice. There's been some very good friendships have developed, uh, because of effortless English. So that's another advantage. If you do this, I know it's a little scary to do it, but, um, I recommend that you do that and you don't need to create a group on Gab. Just join my Gab group and then, you know, post your, put your information. Aslavisa says, we had a great meeting yesterday with a hard topic, overcoming pain. Yeah, see, they're having quite uh, advanced discussions. Now, this is another thing I discussed today with my VIP members is that, you know, different people need different levels of of conversation right so for me in japanese uh, since i'm beginner level i'm just talking about like we call small talk right just like everyday normal topics that you talk about with someone you just meet what do i mean like family weather hobbies um you know really simple stuff it's the same stuff all the time right uh that's my level in Japanese, so I can't talk about overcoming pain. <laughs> this, that kind of topic is way too difficult for me to talk about in Japanese. It's, it's, it's too advanced, okay? So if, if you feel if your level's lower, then that's fine. You can find someone else who wants to talk about, you know, simple topics. Oh, my family, and I have, you know, three children, and I have a daughter and a son, and, you know, very easy topics is fine. But I know a lot of you especially Effortless English members, a lot of you have a higher level and you want to challenge yourself. You want to talk about something uh, uh, a little deeper and deeper topics because you know, your English level is higher. All right. So what they do, what Slavisa's group do, they do, they have a book club. So their discussions are focused on books. right? And I think each meeting, they talk about one chapter of a specific book. Right? So they all read the chapter before the meeting. And then during the meeting, one of them will make a summary of the chapter. And then they all discuss the topic. So their topic yesterday was overcoming pain. How do you overcome pain? I'm guessing I'm like emotional pain in your life. How do you overcome that and heal and become better? All right? So that's a pretty serious and uh, deep topic. So you can, it can be a very, you can have very, very philosophical topics and very, very advanced or very, very simple. And you can also, when you're looking for partners, you can put that also, put that information. Ah, my level's fairly low. I just want to talk about simple stuff. Or, or I want to talk about just sports. I love sports and I know this vocabulary and I want to talk about that. Or I want to practice that vocabulary. So you can be very... Specific or general, it's up to you. Olga says, is storytelling a good method to use during our conversations? I would say don't use the, the, like the storytelling method I do, the teaching method with the questions and all that. No, don't do that. That's not because that's not a real conversation. That's really a teaching technique. It's a good teaching technique, but for a conversation, not so good. But just telling stories about your life things that happen to you is a great idea. That's good conversation, even in your own language, right? It's interesting, right? So I, maybe I tell you, if I was having just a normal conversation with you, I might tell you a story. Oh, let me tell you about the first time I went to India. And then I could tell the whole story, which I've told before about, you know, my first trip to India or, or even just my first day in India, right? And I would just tell the whole story. And that's a great idea. Tell stories during your conversations. Yes, yes. But no techniques, no teaching techniques. Just tell the story naturally. Oh, there's lots of people joining. Great. Hello, hello. Okay, Denise, Denise Machado says, hi, I'm Brazilian. Oh, yeah, you have a, there's a famous uh, jiu-jitsu guy with your same last name. 
Okay, remember, just put your comments one time, please. Please don't put the same comment again, 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 again. Okay, Nasser says, uh, I disagree with being the kicked out rule. I got very busy sometimes, but still love being in the group and hanging out with good people. Well, you know, again, you, you decide the rule yourself. If you make the group, you decide the rule. So that's fine. Uh, it's just it's up to you how you want to do it. I, I was just, but again, you don't want like a giant group. I think it's it, it, if and then it, with lots of people who are not active. Now, if you've been active and then you say, "Oh, I'm busy now, guys. I'm gonna have to kind of be away from the group for a while, and then I'll come back." You know, you just discuss that with your group. Okay, so that's it's that's it's your group, so you can decide whatever rule you want. And if you want to be more flexible about it, and uh, that's fine. It's up to you. Willow White says, I want to say you're absolutely a formidable teacher. Thanks a million. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a Brazilians today saying hello. Hello, Isaac Mora. Okay. Pascal says, hello, AJ from Brittany, France. Mm -hmm. Hello to you. Oh, okay. Tung Min says, uh, my goal is I practice English at least three times a week. Besides that, I listen to VIP lessons and do shadowing. That's a very good plan. A very nice balanced plan. I really like shadowing. This technique improves my pronunciation and concentration. Nice. I agree. I, I recommend it too. It's great. And see, I'm doing something similar with my Japanese challenge. So I'm doing, my goal is to talk, to, to do conversation four times a week. And I haven't quite done that yet. I've been doing about three times a week so far, but I try to increase it to four. But I, I'm also doing other things, not just that. So I'm also each day um, listening and reading for an hour. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we go. Um, and Hamid Faza, yeah, yes, yes, talking was talking about learning methods. Uh, so yes, good learning methods. I agree. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is a good point. See, Willow White said, I started to study Japanese a while ago. I have lost interest because I lost contact with my Japanese friends. I hope to find them again someday. This is a good point, And this is what I realized about myself. <laughs> that uh, without the contact of conversation... You can lose your motivation. Some people. It just depends, right? Some people don't seem to need it. Some people can just, they just love listening and to things in the, la in, in the language in English for you and, uh, or reading it. Like Steve Kaufman at Link is, much, is very much like that. He just loves, like, he, as he learns new languages, he loves, loves, loves reading books and, and other things in the language and listening to the radio in the language. And he, he loves, loves, loves all that uh, kind of media. And, and that's great. So he, for him, like he's, he, he said many times, he, he, he feels no really, he doesn't feel any need to talk to people, to have conversations very much for a long time. Uh, and I used to think that, yeah, okay, that's like, that's the perfect way. But I realized about myself that actually that for me, no, I need it. I need to talk to people because without, without the real conversation, I get bored very fast. I don't care about movies. I don't really care about reading books in another language, honestly. <laughs> um, just media. I, I don't really care about that so much. Uh, even in English, you know, I do, I read books in English, but, um, that's, but I, I don't care about, uh, most other media. So what I want to do is talk to people. That's the whole point. That's why, you know, Japanese, I want to talk to people. <laughs> I want to talk to Japanese people or just talk to people in Japanese. So by talking more, my motivation has just gone way up. 
very, it's been really nice and I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm really enjoying it. And now my, my, now I want to study more. So, um, I really have changed my mind about this completely. And I, so when you have real people you can talk to like this, like Willow White says, you know, uh, it really helps a lot. And if you don't have that, uh, sometimes it's hard to stay motivated. Okay, Evil says, how can I practice English if I'm an introvert? You just talk. <laughs> I'm an introvert, meaning I like Lots of quiet time. I hate crowds. I don't like crowds of people. I don't like going to parties. Even today, I went to the park. And it was really busy today at the park with my kids. And I just said, ah. So I took my kids and I took them away from the playground. And we went to the, into the where the trees were, away from everybody else. And I had a great time. <laughs> okay. So I understand. But, um, ah, you know, you just chat. Especially, I think, online on a, on a you know, like on, on a, just a video call. Um. Yeah, inter introverts can st still love, like to talk to people and connect. It's just usually just in a more quiet way. So if you're an introvert, I would say maybe just focus on maybe a very small group or just, just talk to like conversation partners. Just talk to one person at a time. Don't join some big group. At least At, at least in the beginning. Olga... Sergevina Serge asks, um, are you reading something these days, AJ? What do you think about Stephen King? <laughs> it's interesting you asked me about Stephen, Stephen King. I've read a few of Stephen King's books. I have a mixed feeling about him. I've, so I've read It, I read The Stand, and I read The Shining. And, I, and I've noticed the same pattern in all three where he, he starts the story, like the first half, even the first 75% of the story is super. Like he builds the tension, right? And ah, the, the, the scariness or whatever. Ah, it's really powerful. But I feel like he does not know how to end a story. <laughs> like the endings uh, of all three of those books, I was just like, eh. I just thought, very disappointing. All three of those books, the beginnings are so great, and the endings I thought were terrible. Uh, in fact, so terrible that, like The Shining, for example, it's 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 maybe the only example I can think of that I feel the movie was better than the book because the ending of the movie, The Shining, is great, perfect, perfect ending, and uh, the ending of the book of The Shining is kind of ridiculous. It's kind of, yeah. He always does these big, ridiculous endings that don't fit really the feeling of the story, I, I think. Anyway, this is not a criticism of English. <laughs> it's just my, my feeling about his stories. There's something disappointing about them. Uh, but if you like Stephen King, that's fine. You know, that's just sort of uh, like uh, The Stand is a, amazing i was just like oh this is awesome and then it just i don't know just sort of yeah. <laughs> that's my feeling about stephen king's stories so i stopped reading his books i just thought I, after i think the stand was the last one i read and i just like ah oh, i'm done with stephen king <laughs> Yeah, Lisa says, talking to many people around the world is a, a good possibility to get real information from real people and not just from the media, not from the media. Good point. I agree with that very much, 100%. This is why I don't like media. I don't like media in in English. <laughs> you know, I don't like I don't like American media. I don't even like American movies anymore except for a few old ones. So I don't want to watch Japanese movies except for a few old ones I like, but... In general, I don't want to watch television in any language. So, uh, if I'm not talking to people, then I kind of lose interest. Uh, Olga says, have you ever read something from classic Russian literature? Yeah, I read, um, 
a short kind of a short story. I haven't read any of the big novels yet, but I've read uh, what is it? The Death of is it? Is it Ivan Ilyevich? Okay, the the death of is it Ivan? Um, I can't remember the name. Yeah, Ivan Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy. Considered one of the masterpieces of his late fiction, written shortly after his religious conversion. That makes sense. It's pretty darn depressing. <laughs> um, it's just about a guy dying. Um, I'll, you know, I'll say at the end, it is, it's maybe it's got it. it it's got its uh, good points, um, but uh, it's pretty heavy. Right, as you can imagine. So this is the stereotype of Russian literature, right? Like super heavy and depressing. Um, but I haven't read any of the, like, you know, War and Peace, um, the really big famous ones. But I did, I liked it, but I liked it. I liked it, it um, Ivan Ilyich, or I don't know how to pronounce it in Russian, but uh, it, it was it was interesting. Cool. Sarah says, before the last speaking challenge, I never spoke in English with someone. I was afraid to make mistakes. Now I've gotten confidence. I don't care about it. Helps me a lot to improve. Right, Sarah. Exactly. I know you mentioned this last time too, but that's why we're doing this challenge because I'm trying to encourage you gently to just jump in and do it. I was the same way. Okay. In Japanese. My Japanese level's not great. And uh, I finally decided, ah, forget, I don't care anymore. I'm tired of being quiet, <laughs> right? I'm just going to jump in. I'm just going to talk. I'm going to talk as much as I can. I don't care if I make mistakes. I don't care if I can't remember vocab. I don't care about any of it. I'll do, I'll do what I can when I'm chatting online. What's cool is I'm chatting online. I have Google Translate open, right? So as I'm like, uh, and I just <laughs> type in, I need a word like, uh, how do I say social worker? Uh, then I, I type it in there, you know, and uh, it's, it works. Also, the, you know, so, sometimes the other person speaks English, so I can just ask them, how do you say something in Japanese? Right. So that that's helpful. But if I can't do that, then just use Google Translate and do the best I can. And it works. I, I, you know, I'm having 30 minute conversations right now. And uh, it's fine. Maybe sometimes the other person talks a little more than I do, or a lot more than I do. <laughs> but uh, so jump in, even even as a beginner level, I think you can jump in and just jump in and do it. And for, who cares? That's that's my philosophy now. <laughs> I changed my philosophy about this. Jump in and just have fun. That's the key. All right. Don't force yourself to do it like it's some terrible, horrible thing. Not like in school where you, they force you to speak, then you make a mistake, and then they say, oh, you're wrong, and you feel bad. No, just have fun. Just play, 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 play English, like I used to say. Play, relaxed. Just jump in and do it and make mistakes and use the wrong verb tense and the, use the wrong grammar and forget vocab and all of that. Who cares? Because you will get better. You will get better. So jump in and just do it. That's why we're doing this challenge. So I want you to do it. Jump in on April 20th. Of course, you can jump in right now and start it. Just jump in and do it. That's why I decided to do this publicly with you in Japanese. I could do it quietly by myself, <laughs> right? Nobody would know. But I'm going to share this publicly. And I'm making, I already made my first video in Japanese. And I, I put it on the gab group everyone can go look at it and i will make another one and so will you <laughs> uh after one month and after two months and after three months and hopefully you know if you don't speak japanese you probably can't tell much but i'm hoping you can at least see that i'll i'll be speaking more you know each month maybe speaking a little more and sounding a little more natural uh, and if you do understand japanese uh, even a little bit then you'll know that oh uh, he's making constantly, constantly making mistakes. Who cares? And same for you in English. Doesn't matter. Make mistakes. Just jump in and talk, talk, talk. And here's the here's my encouragement to you. 
just do this a few times. And then you will lose your fear, your nervousness. You just say, hey, it doesn't matter. You just jump in and you relax. And in English becomes a very fun and relaxing thing. You don't care about your mistakes. You don't care about the problems. And you just, you'll improve with time, but you can enjoy it now. That's the point. You don't need to wait until you're perfect. You can just enjoy right now communicating. Even at a beginner level, you can jump in and just enjoy connecting and communicating with people as best you can. Do your best. That's all. And then when you get more advanced, you'll enjoy even more. Okay. Camille Mamedoff says, Hi, Jay. I want to recommend the book about the book about faith. This book changed many people's lives. The name of the book is The World From... Res what is it? The, the, oh, The Words From Risale? Inur Collection. Uh, I have to look it up. Slavi says, I decided my speaking challenge would be in Russian. Ah, see, you can do another language if you want to. Do it. Slavi said, great. Post your... But you got to post your video. Your first video, speaking Russian. Um... You know, you're day zero, you're beginner. I think I'm B1. I already have three conversation partners. Rock and roll, you're ready to go. Cool. That's great. Good, good, good. Because, yeah, she's already very high level of English and she's already got conversation and partners in English and a group. So that's great. You can do another language if you want to. Mm -hmm. All right. Tiago Silva, thank you so much for the uh, the donation, the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you. And Brazilian flag. Okay. Yeah, let's play life. Like Pascal says, let's play life. Let's get in the game. Exactly. This is the thing, is not being too serious about it. Not being serious about it. Just enjoying whatever you can do now. And you know, I always talk about jujitsu because jujitsu people are crazy, just like kind of like CrossFit people and you know. We, we love to talk about it all the time. <laughs> um, or vegans. <laughs> um, anyway, you know, there's something that, like in jujitsu, like even as a white belt. Okay, I sucked and I'm still a blue belt. I'm not very good. Who cares? I love it. I, I just go in there and I have fun and I fight my best. And sometimes I do pretty well and sometimes I do badly. And uh, oh, it's still great. It's so much fun. I just love it. Okay. And I'm better than I used to be. And, but. Compared to a lot of other guys, I'm not good at all. Who cares? Just get in there and keep playing because you get better the more you play and do it. And being playful, being, being, being playful and enthusiastic helps you to improve faster because you're relaxed. You're mentally re and emotionally relaxed. And when you're relaxed, your brain is more open. You, you actually do learn better. There's no stress. Because it's all this, it's, it's, it's a very relaxed thing, like children, right? This is one of the secrets of children for learning anything. That they're always playing while they learn. And they're almost always very relaxed about it. They're not stressed out about making mistakes or doing the wrong thing or how good they are. They don't think about that. You watch some, kid, watch some, little, some kids playing soccer. They're just running around, kicking the ball, having a great time. And they get better and better with time. But... Uh, they, they have a great playful attitude. So Angelina Penahova says, I am the first time, this is my first time listening to your live show. Uh, is this good for listening, for improving English every day, one hour? Yes, you can just listen to my podcast. One hour or more a day will definitely help. How to practice na practice with native speakers? Ask Language Lotus. Okay, now this is more challenging. <laughs> native speakers is fine, right? Because I'm doing that with Japanese. I'm talking mostly to Japanese people. So you have two options, free and paid. Uh, if you want to pay, then you've got to find a, a, a website. Like I recommend italki.com. This is the one I use italki.com I already talked about this in my last show I've talked about this I've talked about italki a couple times and 
but it's a very nice website. The prices are reasonable. And there's lots and lots and lots and lots of people to talk to. You can choose there. You can find people by that have the same schedule as you. You can choose what country they're from. Like if you prefer British or American or Canadian or Australian, it doesn't matter. You can decide. So I talking if you want to pay. If you want to talk to native speakers but free, probably you need to do a language exchange. A language exchange, right? So a language exchange, that's where you're trading your language for their language. And mylanguageexchange.com is... From what I've read, I've never used it, but from what I've read is probably the best one. So I'm going to type it in the chat here. My language exchange.com all together. My language exchange.com. So you can go there and you you can search for people that, you know, speak the language you're trying to learn. In, for you, it's English. And who want to learn your language. Right? And then you just trade with them where... You know, you half the time you speak in your language, they get to practice. And the other half of the time you speak in English and you get to practice. So those are the two best ways for native speakers. Pay or do a language exchange for free. I mean, if it's sleeping. <laughs> um, Adam Kamalov, good to see you again, says, I'm reading easy novels in English. Great idea. When I was reading novels, I enjoyed it. Thank for your advice. Exactly. If you enjoy reading novels, do it. That's really good. Good, good, good. Enjoying is probably 80%. <laughs> I really, I think that, I mean, in my book, I talk about this somewhat, but... I feel even more strongly now that motivation, enjoyment, you know, just loving it, enjoying it somehow is 80% at least of succeeding for English or any language. And the method, the specific methods you use, maybe that's 20%, maybe it's less even, I don't know. But just the, the main thing is find things you like doing. <laughs> and keep doing them. Yeah, Jamila, Jamila says, uh, uh, here in the Czech Republic, we're forced to learn Russian at schools. But see, this is the problem, the forcing part. <laughs> and this is why it doesn't work very well, right? Like most countries around the world, uh, they force students to learn a cer certain languages. Usually it's English. <laughs> um like for me, I, I learned Spanish in high school and university. I had to do it. I had to choose a foreign language. There were only a couple choices. <laughs> it's not like I had a, any, at that time, I had no real interest in Spanish at all, none. And it was just forced on me. And then, of course, they just focus on grammar, 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 and all these difficult verb conjugations. And I was like, Ugh. you know, I just memorized stuff for the test. And then I forgot a lot of it. And I could never speak. And then it was later, like many, many, many years later, <laughs> uh, decades later, that I had a, I planned a trip to go to Spain and, and walk the Camino de Santiago. And suddenly I was super interested in Spanish, super motivated to learn it. And in about three, eh, maybe, hmm, how much time? Really intense time. I probably did about three to four months where I was doing Spanish several hours every day, like two to three hours a day of just listening to many stories, mostly Oscar's stuff, uh, unlimitedspanish.com. I always like to recommend him. And uh, I was doing some shadowing in Spanish and reading like easy novels, or easy books. I was just saying, I was reading nonfiction, but easy books in Spanish. And my Spanish jumped up like, and suddenly, you know, I got there and I was probably B1-ish, if you use the European system, it was enough to travel around Spain for two months and walk the Camino de Santiago and have a fantastic experience. So this shows you the, the difference in motivation, right? Two years of Spanish in school, basically could not talk at all. And then three months and, and a little more. I was listening to stuff before that, but uh, 
um, but really focused and motivated for a few months because suddenly I had a real reason and uh, it helped so much. So absolutely, it's so important. English Ube says, what about speaking practice with non-native speakers? I already talked about that. Go back and watch the beginning of the show because I, uh, I gave a long answer about that. <laughs> Someone says, when I first watched your shows about Brave New World, I didn't believe you at that time. Unfortunately, the Indian media are doing exactly what you said. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the Matrix movie, that first Matrix. The rest of the other movies are terrible. But that first movie is genius. And it's just like the red pill and the blue pill. You think, not my country. Oh, no, because we're all brainwashed in school and uh, by the media growing up. And you don't see it right until you do. And now I come from possibly the most brainwashed country in the world <laughs> where it's the worst uh, America. Uh, so on one hand, it's, it's, if, when, you, when you're in it, it's hard to wake up. But when, once you wake up as an American, you see it and it's like, oh my God, it's all lies, everything. It's all lies. I have to say, Empire of Lies is the perfect name. <laughs> good little piece of rhetoric there. Okay. Yeah, Hamid says, I believe a language is learned through imitation, repetition, and memorization, not through confusing grammatical rules. Right, because, you know, we, we've all, it can occasionally help to, to, to figure out, like, why is there an ED on the end of the verbs, right? Like, talk and talked. You know, it's nice, of course. Oh, it's the past. Got it, right? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but... But trying to memorize very complex rules, like I remember one time as a teacher, I was trying to use a textbook. This is before Effortless English, when I was beginning. And I was using just a textbook, like most teachers, and there was a, the, the topic was articles. Articles. The, a, and an, which you all have probably studied in school at some point. And it I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was like three pages of rules about when to use the or a or an, like the apple or a apple or an orange, an apple, right? A, a grape, whatever. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was just all these very complicated rules that as a native speaker and teacher, I was reading them. I was like, this is super confusing. It's confusing me. I'm confused about this, <laughs> okay? Because uh, these are th three, possibly the three most common, you know, words, articles in English. And uh, yeah, I understand that some languages don't have articles, and therefore it's difficult to know how to use them. But memorizing all those rules does not help you. You've all tried this, right? You, just like in Japanese. Okay, I'll give, like, there are these particles. It's kind of similar. There's these things called particles in Japanese grammar. And yeah, I got I, I, I can read a, a bunch of rules. I, I do. I read rules about it. Like, I'll be on a website, and it'll be the particle uh, ni, N-I. And uh, they'll have this explanation, and I'll read it. And I was like, I still don't really understand <laughs> why to use it. It, it doesn't help. And certainly in the middle of a conversation, that, that, that kind of complicated gram grammatical explanation with all these rules, it, it doesn't help at all. What does help is just seeing it again and again, hearing it again and again and again and again, just, just like, uh, like um, uh, he was just saying that, that, that just the, the, the repetition and the natural seeing it in there, like Hamid said, I was, sorry, I was trying to remember his name, <laughs> Hamid, sorry, um, and then I start to get a feeling, kind of feeling like, okay, I kind of feel, I'm getting a feeling for when you use that. All right, it's still not perfect. I'm, I make mistakes all the time, but, but at least I have a general idea now. But trying to actually analyze it and remember a bunch of rules just actually made it worse. It was very confusing. Or another thing, like it's like the subjunctive verb tense in Spanish. And I, I've read all these explanations about it, and it still confuses me. 
<laughs> okay? It's just here, I just got to get a feeling for it, right? With more time, I would get a more of a feeling. I'm not doing Spanish now, but you get the, you get the, get the idea. Okay. Oh, cool. Fardin says, I'm reading The Hobbit. I really love it. Thank you for introducing it to me. And by the way, uh, why don't you do a show about fasting for Ramadan? It's getting close. Mm, good timing for another fasting show. Good idea. Yeah, The Hobbit's great. The Hobbit is, uh, if you like that kind of fantasy and Tolkien, you know, Lord of the Rings, if you like those movies, uh, The Hobbit's a good book to read because it's a more simple book. The other books by Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings, right? Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, Return of the King. They're quite difficult. Okay, the vocabulary, the writing style, the long sentences, it's all quite tough and not so easy. But The Hobbit is a very different book. It's, it's, I think he wrote it more as a kid's book. So it, it the, everything, it's a shorter book. It's the, the, the writing style is more simple. The vocabulary is more simple. It's very nice. It's also much better than the movie. The Hobbit movie was terrible. The Hobbit book is great. The Lord of the Rings movies I actually kind of liked. I thought those were pretty good. But the Hobbit movies were horrible. Not like the book. That's a good book. So if you like that kind of book, try, you could try reading The Hobbit. So I read The Hobbit when I was in fourth grade, I think. So to give you an idea. What's the timing of my live streaming? Asked Falji. There's no consistent time. <laughs> I just do it when I, when I can. Slavisa says, I started following Effortless English and became a VIP member when Brave New World was the, the book for the book club. Ooh. It was hard in every way, but it was worth it. Yeah, that is a difficult book. It's hard to read because there are all these kind of weird words in it that are not really normal. English words, kind of a little bit sci-fi, right? Science fiction. And it's a heavy, 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 depressing book. Although I, Brave New World is less depressing for me. It's depressing because reading it, I realize this is the global system. This is American culture. This is, this is, this is depressing. This is real. It we live in it now, but, um, but there's a little bit of I will say this there's a it's it, there's some there's a little bit of humor in it too a little uh, compared to let's say um, George Orwell Animal Farm 1984 which are also you know also quite true <laughs> and depressing but uh, not no no real humor in those books the I mean kind of Animal Farm it has a little but um, 1984 I, so kind of depressing and heavy that yeah just that's why we didn't do it as a book club but yeah those are good for you so that's great now that's a good uh, hamid says how, what how about how to win friends and influence people we i think we did the the same uh, author uh how to stop worrying and start living i think we did that as a book club didn't we Dale Carnegie? I think we did. Okay, a few more, and then I'm going to go. Oh, Adam Carmel says, I understand you 100%. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, by the way, uh, I would like to mention that this is kind of a business related, so I'll be quick, but. Uh, effortless English, we can now accept Union Pay. Union Pay, which is a Chinese company, I believe. Un Chinese company, uh, credit card. Union Pay is growing, it's popular um, because of uh, sanctions and other things. Uh, some countries cannot use Visa or MasterCard. So now we accept Union Pay. Right now, only for the courses, not for VIP yet. I'll, I'm getting it. I'll get it. I'll get uh, 
I'll get union pay working for the multiple payments for uh, VIP soon. But right now, so right now you cannot use union pay for VIP, but you can use it for Power English, original course, business English, pronunciation course. Okay, so just I don't think I, if you go to my website, you won't see union pay. We don't, we're, we'll, we're changing that soon, but we can accept it. Just go to the payment page and put in your union pay card number. It will work. Okay, so we got Union Pay working. Important, I think, because Visa, Mastercard now are playing the same game that other companies have played of trying to censor and block people for all different reasons. So I think it's good that Union Pay is now an option. Oh, Jamila says, "I how are your twins? I'm praying for you and your family every day." That's very sweet. Thank you, and they are great. Uh, they're three years old now, and uh, yeah, so much fun. It's a really fun age, and I'm having a very good time with both of them. It's, they're so cute. They're sweet. <laughs> Great. Um, Mozilla says, Hi, Jay. I've been listening in, to and following your teaching methods in my class. It works perfectly. Great. I can understand your podcast without effort, says Danilo Silva. Does that mean I'm B1 or B2? Probably B2 would be my guess, if you can understand me easily. Oh, cool. Strong Power said, I've been listening t to you for two years, and I did a grammar test yesterday. I didn't know everything but i did get 24 correct answers from out of 30 i understood that your method is very powerful right so you did learn grammar but you learned it in a natural way in an intuitive way like i was talking about with the japanese example you, you kind of learn to feel the correct grammar instead of having a, a bunch of confusing rules in your head and the exceptions <laughs> okay which just becomes super confusing I mean, I agree. I mean, it says focus on plain English rather than complicated English or highly sophisticated English. Agreed, especially for speaking. You might have a reason that you need to understand more advanced, more sophisticated, more complicated English. Like, for example, if you're in your job and you do, um, you're an engineer, you might need to know a bunch of a lot of uh, engineering vocabulary in English for your job to understand it. But for normal speaking, like conversations with regular people, you can use very simple English. You don't need to use like super complicated vocabulary or uncommon vocabulary. You can use the most common vocab and communicate very well. Oh, yeah. Deluxe IO says, I hope you add Think and Grow Rich to your book club list. Yep, good idea. And you, actually, you're reminding me we need to do another book club. We have not done one. I, I did the, the last book we did was Life After Life about near death experiences, and, which is an excellent book. Definitely read it. But we need another, another one. Hmm, what shall we do next? I'll think about it. Yeah, and someone else is asking. Yasin Admani, same question. What about the next book club for the, I mean, the next book for the Effortless English Book Club? They don't know. I think we need something cheerful again. I think, I think uh, if, if you want to understand the world situation, <laughs> watch the one about Brave New World and uh, Animal Farm. That's what we live in right now. We live in a combination, kind of a, the child of Animal Farm and Brave New World. That's our global system now. So if you if you want to get the depressing truth, the red pill, watch those. They're on my YouTube channel, my podcast. So I don't feel like I need to keep talking about that endlessly because <laughs> it gets quite depressing. Just talking about the problem becomes depressing. We need to talk about the positive things we can do to live good, happy lives. So that's what I prefer to focus on 
for our, our next book and in general, right? We need to under, understand the situation, but we also don't want to endlessly focus on crying about it because there's nothing we can do to change it, uh, but we can adapt to it in our own lives. Oh, now this is a great movie. Oh, Arun Kumar. <laughs> Please suggest some movies like They Live. That's an awesome... So that's another movie. And the great thing, this is a funny movie, but it has a serious, serious message, which is very much like Brave New World or uh, 1984. But it's kind of science fiction, and it's done with as this kind of like action movie, science fiction... And also kind of funny. It's very well done, but the message is, uh, you know, the general message is kind of kind of like The Matrix a little bit. That's a good movie. It's an old movie. They live. They live. Really good one. The Matrix, of course, is also excellent. All right. Okay, I'll take. A, let me see what time is it now. Oh, I've gone over an hour, so I'm going to do a couple more, and then, then time to go. I mean, oh yeah, Arun's saying uh, movies to wake you up. Well, the thing is, Hollywood, uh, the job of Hollywood is not to wake you up; it's to put you to sleep. So it's quite tough to find movies like that because not many get made. <laughs> uh, the vast majority of movies are does have the opposite purpose, right? because it's propaganda just like television and everything else so i can't i don't have a big long list of movies to like red pill movies there aren't many maybe fight club i would probably add fight club yeah fight club the matrix they live there may be some old movies of like a version of uh, for 1984 uh, I think there's a, a an anime, like a cartoon movie of Animal Farm. It's kind of old. I don't know where you find it, but I remember seeing it as a kid. So, but they're not many. They're not many. Man's Search for Meaning. Uh huh. There's people giving me book club ideas. Thank you. All right, let's see. We got one more here. I'm just looking through the. AJ, you look well, not tired, rested, says Jermila. Yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Number one, I'm sleep finally sleeping better after a couple of years of uh, not great sleep with twins. And the second thing is, I'm take uh, I. I was getting a little tired of jujitsu. I was training pretty hard with jujitsu, and uh, I think it was starting to it was a little too much. I was getting overtrained. I was getting kind of uh, a bit too tired. Uh, so I decided to take. I got a little injury on my knee. Nothing serious, but I decided I, I need to. I need to take a few weeks of just. Uh, I'm still training, but I instead of three times a week, I'm doing two times a week. So I I cut one day. Uh, just for a, like like maybe a month, like an easy month, and then I'll get, go back up again. But just to rest my body up. The sec the other thing I'm doing is I, I've improved my nutrition because I'm training more. I uh, I'm doing acai. Some of you guys know that it's a, it's like this uh, f like a little berry. It's kind of like a super food, uh, popular in Brazil, parts of Brazil, really popular with uh, jujitsu people. <laughs> uh, so I've been doing that, and I think it's helping. Helping me recover from my workouts. Uh, I do like this smoothie. So I'll do some like kind of yogurt, acai, banana, goji berries, and maybe like strawberries and blueberries and blend it up. Drink that every day. And uh, yeah, I think it helps. Been helping me. I feel, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Oh, cool. 
Uh, even though, even though Luis Santos says next Sunday I'll wake up at 6 a.m. to watch since the beginning. Uh, no worries, no worries. So Ramadan is coming in one week. All right, happy fasting, everybody. Excellent. That'd be a good time. I'll do. A, I'll do a. Uh, I'll do a. Um, a show, another show about fasting soon. Uh, D- Danilo Silva says Fight Club is awesome. Yeah, I agree. That's a good one. They live from 1988. Someone's asking when did when was they live made? Maybe it's it's yes, probably the 80s. It's a very old movie. Yeah, 1988, a film by John Carpenter. They live. Yep. They live. Lots of Brazilians in the chat. So yeah, maybe some Brazilians, you know, acai. It's this little purple berry, right? Yeah, Sarah says, please pick a cheerful book for the next book club. <laughs> yes. So, okay, you can suggest, you know, get on Gab, send me your, your suggestions for a cheerful book for the book club. It could be fiction, too. Wanna ma- possibly the most popular book club I did, I have done so far, was The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, which the English version, obviously. Um, so, yeah, we you know so so we could, we could also do fiction if it's but we for fiction it needs to, we try to try to keep it a little bit easier so it's not too difficult. Sometimes fiction books can be quite tough, meaning the English. The vocab can be difficult. So we want to keep it simple. Something like The Alchemist. The Alchemist has a pretty simple level of English. Uh, I read it in Spanish, so I knew that it wasn't so tough. And uh, so that, and it was a really positive message. Very good. We could do another Paulo Coelho book, I guess. I'm trying to think of... Uh, I've read a few of his books, but that's really the best one, I think, is The Alchemist. Um... But anyway, give me your suggestions on on Gab. Just send me a message on my Gab and say, you know, if you know of a good book, it could be fiction or it could be nonfiction, either one. And some people have already given me uh, things, but yeah, let me know. Yeah, like Alexi says, The Alchemist was super. I agree, The Alchemist was really a good one. Adam Kamaloff also loved The Alchemist. Yeah, that was a good one. So something like The Alchemist could be something like that. I'm trying to think. It was so great because it, it, it's got a great message. It's fiction, kind of this nice story. And the language, the, the level of English was not too difficult. So that it was sort of perfect. <laughs> um, like Unlimited Power, like from Tarun, just suggested Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins, is an excellent book. However, it is a bit difficult. If I could find an easy Tony Robbins book, he... Let me see if I could find this really quickly, guys. He had one called Notes from a Friend, I think. And it was a simple version of his books. Notes from a friend, Tony Robbins. Yes, indeed, on Amazon.com. There it is. This could be a good one. Quick and simple, A quick and simple guide to taking control of your life. I might have just chosen our book, guys. Here it is. I'm going to share my screen. If you're looking on, watching on video, you can see right here. Oh, get, there we go. Um, all right. So let's see. Tony Robbins. This is like a little simple version. And I think there's a PDF, Kindle version. Yes, Kindle. You could probably find it somewhere else, you know, the ebook version. Notes from a Friend by Tony Robbins. I believe I already have this book. But I don't think I have the ebook. I'll buy this book. Yeah. All right. Great. Let's. Boom. Pays to be decisive. I'm going to decide right now. This is our book. Let's look inside. See, one man's story he tells the story of his life. It's kind of like his book, Unleash the Power Within, but it's 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 more simple. It's like a simple version of his some of his book. Here's the contents. How to turn your life around. There are no failures. How to make strong decisions. That's what we're doing right now. Um, this is it. Perfect. 
Ding, ding, ding. Book chosen. Notes from a Friend by Tony Robbins is our next book club. There you go, guys. <laughs> Thanks for pushing me <laughs> to decide. Great. I'm going to write it in the comments here. Notes from a Friend by Tony Robbins is our next book. Please get that book. It's on Amazon.com. And you might find it elsewhere. Oh, Captain Fantastic. I'll get to that in a second. Yeah, so notes from a friend. Let me just do a general search. Notes from a friend, Tony Robbins. Uh, on Amazon. Oh, I'm sure you can find it in other places too, right? Simon & Schuster. Okay. Bestbooks.com. Bestbookbits.com. Yeah, Amazon. So whatever, wherever you can find ebooks, Target, yeah. Okay, so yeah, get that book, guys. That's our next book. Notes from a friend. Notes from a friend by Tony Robbins. Positive, awesome. You you can feel good. It's gonna be one of the. It's gonna be a book that makes you feel good. Awesome, great. And then finally, I'll just we'll end with Lisa because uh, she gave us. Uh, She's giving us a nice movie suggestion. Captain Fantastic. I just, I saw that. Yeah, well, a year or two ago, I saw that. It's a very nice movie. It is a good movie. And it's a recent movie. There are not many movies that are new that I like. Almost none. <laughs> I like that one. That was pretty good. So Captain Fantastic. Jeremy Ellis, the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, I read the book and saw the movie. A little depressing, but... Funny, but depressing at the end. Oh, and then Dave, Dave, David Silva says, one thing about Asi is it's consumed with sugar most popularly and without sugar when they eat it with the main meal. Right. So how I do, I know that in, like you said, in, in Brazil, sometimes they'll, they'll eat it with rice or something, like a, a, like not, not sweet, because it's not so sweet by itself. It's not a sweet berry. You know, like some berry, like strawberries are very sweet, right? But uh, I'll say it's not. But, um, but that's why I use it when I put it in yogurt, and then I, I don't add sugar. I don't want too much sugar, but I, um, but I put like a banana in there, and I'll put... Um, like I said, goji berries, which are kind of sweet, and blueberries are sweet, and strawberries. So I, I put some other things that are sweet. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit of sweetness, which is nice, but not too much. Uh, Acai is really nice, and uh, you know all the jujitsu guys. They always, I, I I tried it because two of my jujitsu instructors are doing are eating acai. My my main instructor Tiago, you guys have heard him before, who's Brazilian and uh, and then my another instructor uh, is also doing it and they both said oh it really helps it helps your muscles recover from exercise and I think they're right I've been doing it and yeah yeah it's kind of it's it's nice acai is really nice oh yeah Daniel Silva says some places in Brazil use acai like ice cream yeah Tiago was telling me that that in the summer they'll they'll eat it kind of frozen and and, and yeah mm, yummy. All righty. That's it, guys. That's all for now. <clears throat> so we have our book club. When shall we do our book club? We'll do it soon. Uh, follow me on Gab again because that's where I announce things usually. Get the book for the book club. Notes from a Friend by Tony Robbins. Let's start it soon. Today is Sunday. So let's start it. We could start it in a few days if you guys get the book. Maybe like... Uh, you know, like Thursday or Friday or something, we could do it. So get the book. Notes from a friend by Tony Robbins, and we'll do our first book club. We'll do chapter one. All right, guys. Lots of love to you. As always, join my VIP program, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join there. Become a VIP member. And all of you, everybody, do our challenge. Join our challenge, our speaking challenge. Starts next month, April 20th. Watch this show again and find your conversation partners now and make your, your beginner video, right? 
your like day zero, day one video. Put it on Gab. Show us. Speaking English for two minutes. This is your start video. Two minutes speaking English. Right? This is exactly what I'm doing with Benny Lewis over at fluentin3months.com. They did a they did their challenge and I did it my day zero video. And it's the same one I put on Gab for you guys to see. And that's going very well, by the way. I highly recommend it. I'll talk more about it after I have a little uh, a little more experience with it. But uh, it's been really, so far, a very positive experience. And uh, as I said, he changed my mind totally about uh, speaking in the beginning and just jumping in and speaking as much as possible. Uh, so anyway, I'll, we'll talk about it more at another time. But lots of love to you all. And bye for now.